excited to share with you my hot chocolate recipe. And can you believe it? The kids have just stolen it. So give me a sec. Oh, the joys of life. <laughs> Here it is. This is what we are making. It is a hot chocolate powder. Now, we can go and buy this stuff, think Milo, think other kinds of hot chocolate, but I wanna show you how you can get something a little bit nourishing, a little bit made with real ingredients, everything you'll be able to pronounce, and this is gonna be a heck of a lot of fun for the kids to make with you. So, what are you gonna do now? Well, make sure you hit subscribe below because I've got a bunch of easy snack recipes that I want you to know all about. And I will leave here in the description exactly the quantities that you need for this guy, but definitely just play along, um, you know, and give this a go with me. I love making this one because you get to do this part. Let me just pull you down a little bit there so that you can see it well. You actually make, hello, kids are gonna absolutely love this. You make a toffee for it. I find that this is such a great way because it gets in a beautiful flavor into your hot chocolate, it means that it melts. Because so often, and trust me when I say I have tried a bunch of different recipes, but they end up being really quite gluggy. And I don't want that. And I don't wanna make a high fructose corn syrup version either that you know you get at the shop. So I wanna make something um, that melts, but is also gonna fill the kids up and be delicious. So what are you starting with? Well, in a warm pan, and I should actually, just be sneaky. I often use, and I'll pull you out here just so you can see my whole kitchen. Give me a little wave, give me a little thumbs up if you can see me okay and can hear me okay. It would be nice, uh, nice to check that part. In the pan that I'm gonna use, I love using the scales for my Thermomix. I am just gonna weigh out 25 grams of butter. Now, I kind of have a rule that if I'm ever using butter, it's always the salted kind. I um, find that it has more flavor. And I just love it. Oh, oh no, dang. I thought I got that right then. It went from 25 up to 30. Oh, there we go, 25 grams. So you wanna go ahead and just start melting that off. It's very tricky for me to say to you the exact number that it should be on your cooktop. Because let's be honest, your cooktop's a little bit different to mine. But I find I sort of aim for about a medium heat there. So the butter is on melting, and this one you're gonna love because it is so, so quick. While that's melting, I'm gonna measure out my sugar ingredient. Now, Stace, being Stace, has tried a few different sugar options. This one is rice malt syrup, which basically means that there is no fructose in it, which can be really great for a lot of us, um, especially when we're trying to lessen the sugar load. You buy this just at the supermarket. I love to buy it from the Source Bulk Foods of Honest to Goodness here in Australia. Um, always looking for an organic one, um, and it's brilliant. I haven't yet tried this with maple syrup, but I want you to, and you have to let me know in the comments below how it goes. I have made this with Rapidura sugar, and it works perfectly well. And I have also tried it with monk fruit sugar, which, I don't know, has anyone tried monk fruit sugar? It's definitely like a new, oh, yes, 100 grams, boom. <laughs> Today is gonna be a good day. Always give it a wipe as well, guys, afterwards especially for my gorgeous kitties that are playing along at home. You wanna make sure before you put the lid back on, otherwise it'll set hard and you won't get the lid on. Um, yeah, the Rapidura works an absolute dream as well. So you can choose and definitely use what you have on hand. Please don't go and buy something brand new if you have a great sugar there. I want you to use it. Okay. So grab a spatula and a spatula that you're going to be able to go around your pan with. You'll notice here that I'm using a saucepan. 
I want something that's got a little bit of depth because when the sugar goes in, it will start bubbling. That's what you're after. You're also after something with a decent, like, heavy bottom on it as well. So don't be using your non-stick stuff. You want to use, like, a stainless steel. And here, my butter, I can, can you see it there? Can you see it bubbling all right, guys? Leave me a little yes in the comments. That'd be great. Um, there we go. And it's bubbling away. And the next thing you want to do is you want to add in your 100 grams of sugar. So you got in here your 25 grams of butter. If you like stays, use a salted one. You know, it always tastes better. And 100 grams of sugar. And what we're going to do now, and I'm going to show you exactly this process because I want you to become a pro at it. Uh, because for me, I had to just keep experimenting with sort of like we're making a caramelly Nelly kind of thing, right? I had to keep experimenting with how long I let the butter bubble away and the um, sugar bubble away at. And I don't want you to have to experiment that. So this is why it's great that you're in here with me now. Let me show you, I'm just gonna give this a stir, what you're looking at now. Okay, come on in. So here we go. See there, it's just runny and there is tiny little bubbles. I find that this process does take anywhere between five and 10 minutes. I can't tell you why sometimes it changes. Uh, it just does. But it's something that I often do, and I'd love for you guys to think about this as well, is, is this is the kind of thing that you make up when you have something else going on in the kitchen, right? So if you're like, okay, brilliant. I'm making, uh, say, some fermented carrots, which you can check out here on Facebook, or you might even be just cleaning up from dinner and you'd be like, okay, I'm gonna be putting away dishwasher stuff or I've got a whole heap of washing up to do. This is such a great time to give it a go. Alrighty, I'm gonna get you in here again because I want you to really see what we're looking at now. See how we're starting to get bubbles on there? You don't want these bubbles and you can see that they're not exploding like crazy quick. You don't want them to be that they're like exploding so quick that you're actually burning the sugar. That's not good and you want them to be going at a steady pace. So what you just saw there is a really good one. Um, sorry, this isn't straight. Uh, at sort of what you're looking for. I just keep it moving as well. This is why this spatula is so great. When you're going around it, guys, here's a really good one. You can see that at the base, See how there's all the bubbles? Let me know in the comments that you can see that. I just use my silicon spatula, so never plastic, always silicon. I just go around and make sure it's getting off the base. Because when you keep this moving, it means that it's not gonna burn. And that's perfect. And it also will help show you when you know that it's ready. So, while you're waiting for it to be ready, I've got one already done. What you wanna do, I'm just going to pull this off, is grab some parchment paper, non-stick paper, glad bake, whatever the heck you want to call it. Get it here next to your um, cooktop. You want this to be ready. Rye, why, rye, <laughs> why, is because to cool this down quickly, you want to get it onto something that you can spread it flat with, right? And I find that's the best one. All right, so we're still not overly sticky. And you'll see in a sec what I mean when it starts getting sticky. And that is always my indicator that I'm ready to go and it's done. What would happen if it hasn't cooked for long enough? Then your pickle is gonna be is that when you put it on your sheet to cool, it's not gonna go hard. It will stay really caramel-like. And my loves, if that happens to you, then sister, you're just having some caramel, right? How delicious would that be? You'd still be able to break it up, stir it through some ice cream. I don't know, maybe you've got an idea. Have you ever made caramel? What else could you use it for? You could use it as like little tiny chopped up chewy, like chewy caramels. 
This stuff I'm never really worried about because I know exactly what's in it. It's butter and it's rice malt syrup or it's butter and it's real sugar. When you know what's in it, it's, you know, you just don't get as worried. Okay, let me show you exactly how it's looking now. So see here, it's bigger bubbles. And it's starting to, when I stir it, see here, it's starting to get very sticky. That's how I know that it's right. I can see too, when I'm doing it off the, the, um, the side of the bowl, that it's very brown in colour. This is what I want. This means that the sugars are cooking. And this is your little guide to be like, yep, I'm nailing it. This is where I want it to get to. Okay. I'm nearly there. This has probably been about five minutes or so. Rightio. All right. You could... Um, probably do this in a thermomix. I don't know how. I like to just do it here so that I can monitor it and I can really get into it and then I'm not going to waste any of it being on the beaters. Um, you may be able to do this in your microwave, but again, don't. Just do it this good old way. Whoa! Check this out. <laughs> Look at the size of the bubbles that are in there. See how stretchy and stringy that is now we're just about there i would say another minute and we'll be able to pull it off you will find too the coloring dependent on what uh sugars that you use will be how dark the color is of course if you've cooked it long enough it will be darker in color and this one I've got here, which I'm going to talk you guys through in a sec because this is it actually dried. There's a little sneak peek for you. This one I did let go quite a while. It never burnt, but it's been like it's done it quite a while. What that just means is that it's going to be stronger in like a toffee flavor, which how delicious is that hot chocolate going to be? Okay, there we go. I can see that it's all pulling away. It's very brown on the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my parchment paper and I'm going to try and do it in a big sort of line of it. Why? Because rather than doing a blob, it means that it will cool quicker. And let's be honest, that's exactly where we want to get it to, right? We want it to cool quicker. I'm just using the side of my spatula and the back of it just to go around and grab everything out to make sure that it's not on the sides and just there we go to get that on the paper fill that up with some cold water and there it is check that out so that is the start that's the sugar toffee that is going to be the biggest hit for your uh, homemade hot chocolate. Radio. Fast forward 10 minutes because of uh, Stace being organized. Ding! Here it is, it's done. So, what you're left with is a really thin, like a really solid wafer of your sugar and your butter. When you crunch it, can you hear that? Leave me a little, find your little thumbs up emoji and yeah, let me know that you can hear it. So it is very, very crispy. You want that. That is what is going to add bulk to your chocolate um, powder. It is going to add flavor to it. It is so incredibly delicious. All right. And now is the fun of just building your powder. So you've pretty much done the hard work with that. I'll leave mine next to the window. And you want to go ahead and get those gorgeous little fingers that are in your home, I'm sure, to give you a hand with this and break it up a little and pop it into your blender. I also have a KitchenAid blender and I tried it. It works perfectly. No pickle. You don't need a Thermomix. I simply have it and I love it. So that's why I use your Magic Mix, your food processor, whatever you've got, it's going to work. You just need to follow these exact same steps. So break them up. The kids might find it really fun 
to do, um, say with the back of a rolling pin, or they might have um, like a little hammer. You might have one of those, you know, like the hammer. Do that. You just don't want it going everywhere that you can't um, can't get it all into your powder. All right, next thing, you want to be adding in some chocolate, uh, like some cacao. So rather than using chocolate, we're trying to keep this whole foods and real food real easy with stays, you want to be using cacao. So this I love buying in Australia. It's called Loving Earth is the brand that I really like to buy. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but it is so incredibly delicious. You don't need as much of it. It doesn't have a bitter taste. It is just yum. So you wanna be, oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> oh, the fun. Let's try this one. Hey, we got ourselves a winner there. I do a heaped spoonful. So that is probably one and a half to two tablespoons. I really recommend starting off smaller. You know, if you are worried about that the kids don't typically have raw cacao and are they gonna find it bitter, then what you wanna do is just start that little bit smaller because you can always add a bit more. Another way that you will soften, sorry, Neighbours, kids. <laughs> um, yeah, you can use some vanilla. I love that. I pretty much, that's my given. If I'm ever doing hot chocolate, there is always some vanilla in there. And now you've got some optional extras. You can 100% leave it as is. Job done, no problem. But this is Stace. And I'm always about upping the nutritional value of our food. And something I love to add in is collagen. This one is the same brand that I was talking about in the marshmallow recipe. I'll make sure that I link that up for you where I use gelatin. This brand, Gelatin Australia, I buy their collagen as well. You can get really great ones from the Source Bulk Foods, Whole Food Stores, Online, iHerb, all of them. Why do I use it? Well, it's an incredible hit of protein. And whenever I'm having a hit of protein with my sugars, it means that my blood sugar levels are just you know, they're going up, but they're being safeguarded rather than going up, down, up, down, up, down. So in it goes. I do about the same amount of chocolate as I do of collagen. This is completely unflavored. You will get nothing from it. Like it won't leave any kind of texture. Um, the thing I love about it too is that when you whip it up, it actually helps thicken your um, hot chocolate. And then you want to add in... Again, about probably half that amount, I add in just a, probably two teaspoons of, here I'm using um, blanched, which just means the husk of it is gone, almond meal. But you could do that with a linseed, you could do sesame seeds, you could do any kind of seeds ground up or any kind of nuts. I was actually thinking about it the other day going, gee, wouldn't it be good, sorry, um, wouldn't it be good with some hazelnut meal in it? Like it would be quite like Nutella -y like. All right. So what you do next is you just put the lid on. And I go around to full ball for about three seconds. All right, here goes. And you can check it. You might actually choose, and this is what's going to be the fun thing of cooking this with the kids, is they might like to keep it actually quite chunky. But that even says on my Thermomix, two seconds. And look at how powder-like that is. You know, it happens really quick. And of course, that's dependent on your blender of how quick it goes. But if you want bigger shards of that toffee, then just blend it for less. And now you get the fun task of giving it a taste and making sure that you're happy with it. Mm. I love when you eat it. <laughs> Seriously, like, you're going to absolutely love this. Because I haven't blended it too much, it, I'm getting like that snap crackle each time when I'm like munching on it. And it's crunching 
in um, in my mouth. It is just so incredibly delicious. For me, that was absolutely enough of the raw cacao, but you see how you go. Once you're done, all you're gonna do is put it into a jar. And this is what I have here. So, to make up your hot chocolate, grab your espresso machine. I often do this, or another way that you could do it is putting it in back into your saucepan. But I wanna show you this technique. To get in your milk, just regular old cow's milk. If you're using a dairy milk, uh, non-dairy milk, and you want it to be incredibly fluffy, I find the best dairy-free alternative that will give you a really beautiful like bubble is um, macadamia milk. And then I'm putting in a generous spoonful. Like, look at that. That's quite big there, right? Like, I mean business. We're having hot chocolate. Just like that. And, oh, I didn't plug it in. And turn it on. If you're gonna do this in your saucepan, just heat it with your milk and give it a whisk. You will find straight away, and I'm gonna pour this in so that you can see it, it melts. It is so thin and delicious because when you're doing the, the nuts and the collagen, it is powder-like, right? It's absolutely perfect. Um, don't, if you're gonna be using whole nuts in order to whiz that down, whiz it first before you put the toffee in because you will want it to be really, really thin. Um, and then we're gonna get our bits together. So just a sec. I can't believe I didn't get these bits out. So we need our cup and it ain't a hot chocolate without some marshmallows. I will link this recipe up for you, but you can um, play along here. I made, showed you how to make your own homemade marshmallows um, on a recipe, and it'll be here in the description uh, below, and it is so incredibly simple. You literally need honey, gelatin, a little bit of water. Like, seriously, it is like so, so, so simple. The great thing about this powder is it'll last for ages. So put the lid on. You might choose to keep it in your cupboard or you could even put it in your fridge. I like leaving mine in the cupboard in a really great airtight container. Just give it that little extra turn. Um, Candace, I love that question. Howdy there. Can you leave the nuts out 100%? You don't need to. You could also even leave out the collagen. I'm just showing you the stace way of how do I sneak in some extra protein, but you can absolutely do it whichever way. Um, that you like and now we have our gorgeous hot chocolate look at that can you see it's amazing like it is thin there is nothing that's chunky did you see when I rolled that out Let, give me a little thumbs up uh, it is just incredible and what you can do next is um sorry i just gotta have to do this because it's the rules oh it's so good oh my gosh i love this did you want to come put some marshmallows on back mm -hmm. my son is eagerly waiting behind the camera for it okay so you could use some of this on top it's a good idea isn't it babe okay and a few marshmallows can I have a strawberry? Yeah. Look at this. Just a sec. Look at that. <laughs> Do you like this hot chocolate? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Just be careful. Hold it like this. And it's hot. Okay. Give it a taste and let us know. Is it delicious? <laughs> oh, there we go. We've already got seconds coming in here. Definitely, I'll do it in a sec. So give this a go. It is so delicious. What else could you use it on? And I was having to think about that before. But, oh good. You like it? Oh, more marshmallows. <laughs> You're definitely my kid. Um, you could sprinkle this on ice cream. Think of this like a Milo. 
Think of it that way, or a chocolate kind of powder. This would be delicious sprinkled on some pancakes. How good would that be with some butter and some pancakes there? Mommy, this I stuff is going to last you. Speaking of pancakes, I've got a good idea for pancakes. We can put chocolate chips in them. You could put chocolate chips in them. Um, but yeah, definitely, like, you could use this for a whole host of things. You could also even make this into a smoothie. So say you're wanting to get in some of those extra things. And a sneaky last bit before I leave you loves to make this, and you've got to let me know in the comments how it goes. And come across to Instagram. I'm Stacey Claire there. Um, and I'm also the same on Facebook. And make sure you follow along and tag me in when you give this one a go. But if you're a little bit like me and you've got kids that sometimes see a naturopath and they have some medicines that they need to include, this is such a great spot. You mightn't want to put it in here. I mean, that's something you could even chat with your naturopath about. But for me, if I had something that was powder-like and it wasn't having an issue with being stable with, with heat, so say it was some magnesium or some zinc or some vitamin C powder that they wanted me to include, I could make up this hot chocolate with a spoonful of that in and it would be absolutely delicious. It would be such a perfect spot to hide it. Alrighty, make sure you subscribe here and if you love this recipe, hit share. Share it with, um, with a girlfriend because what a gift as well. Could you imagine making some of these up with the kids and dropping them off at your mate's doorsteps to get through the next little bit of, you know, homeschooling? Be so lovely. All right, Stacey's hot chocolate powder. Enjoy it. Bye, guys.